Okay, using trig ratios to find unknown area angles. Sorry. So this math 15, we're doing talking about trig here. Now we're going to talk about trig ratios. Now first we have to talk about, if you remember yesterday or last lesson, we were talking about labeling triangles, uh, right angle triangles. And uh, so when we were talking about that, do, 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 we were talking about relative labeling. So that's on page three. So we're going to revisit that a bit here because we need that to talk about trig ratios. Now when we're doing relative labeling with the right angle triangle, the side opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. The side that is across from our reference angle, this is our reference angle, is the opposite. And the side that is right next to our reference angle that is not the hypotenuse is the adjacent. So we have those three sides to deal with. Now, many, 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 many hundreds of years ago, other mathematicians figured out some of these proportions for us. So we're benefiting from that. What they found by studying the right angle triangle is uh, they found that there was a relationship between the ratios of the sides to each other um, and specific angles, okay? Um, and uh, from those, they derived what we call the trig ratios, the primary trig ratios. There are also secondary trig ratios, which you'll learn about in grade 12. Okay, but you don't have to worry about them for now. Now, during trig units, you're going to hear math teachers say, so ka toa all the time. Okay, and that's really just a mnemonic for us to remember our three primary trig ratios. So sine theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that is the OH of SOKATOA, SOKATOA. Cos theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that is the AH of CA. And finally, TOA is, the OA is the opposite over adjacent, which is the TAN ratio. So you're saying, ah, oh, ratios, miss, what, what, what? Well. Uh, it's for a number of reasons. It's basically the ratios of the side lengths to each other. And like I said, somebody's done all this work for us. And for years, they used tables, trig tables, to talk about these things. You all have scientific calculators. And you'll notice that on your scientific calculators, you have three magic buttons. You have the sine button, the cos button, and the tan button. And those are basically the trig uh, ratio tables in calculator form. So it saves you a bit of time. We used to have to look up the numbers to figure out the ratios. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the anatomy of these equations. Um, each trig ratio has the following features. So they have the theta, which is the angle, our reference angle, right? Um, the top number for cos, and I don't know why we've done cos sine tan instead of sine cos tan. The top number is our adjacent, and our bottom is the hypotenuse, and this forms a ratio, okay? So if I wanted to find the ratio of cos 35, I would find that adjacent side, find that hypotenuse for that triangle, and I would get the ratio, okay? Um, sine, angle, which is your reference angle. Uh, top number is opposite, bottom number is hypotenuse. And then finally, we're dealing with tan, and we have our reference angle, and for tan, the top number is opposite, and the bottom number is adjacent. So that's where SOKATOA comes from. Now, again, this is in the wrong order. So let's play around, let's find some ratios. So, using the diagram, we're going to answer each of the following. 
we want to find the ratio of tan for z. So let's find z. z is right here, so that would be our reference angle, okay? So we want tan of z is equal to, well, tan is opposite over adjacent. So from z, 40 is our opposite. From z, 30 is our adjacent. So the t ratio uh, from z for tan is 40 over 30. Um, now this next one says find the ratio for sine of z. So we can keep that same um, uh, uh, reference angle. But here we need to now identify, because sine is opposite over hypotenuse, we need to make sure we know where our hypotenuse is. So <clears throat> sine of z is, well, it's so, right? So it's opposite over hypotenuse, which is 40 over 50. Now I forgot here, we can reduce this. We can change this to a decimal. 40 divided by 30 is equal to 1.3333. And we generally, for these, we'll take to four decimal places for uh, validity. Okay? So here, 4 divided by 5, or 40 divided by 50, sorry, is 0 0.8. Okay? And it rounds off. It's a terminating decimal. Um, and I'm just going to write TOA in here so you know that one as well. And then the last thing asks us to find the ratio for cos of z. So cos of z, well, that's ka, right? So that means it's adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is 30, hypotenuse is 50. If I divide 30 by 50, I get 0.6. So those are my three ratios for z, for tan z. Okay, or for Z, angle Z, reference angle. It's really important to identify your reference angle when you're doing this. Now, <clears throat> that's finding the ratio. Um, what I want you to do now, too, is I want you just to check on your calculate. Or no, mm, no, not yet, sorry. Finding the angle. There are two methods used to find the measurement of a missing angle. We can use our trig ratios, right? So give them the ratio in the form of a fraction or decimal, and we use the second function on your calculator. So um, we're going to use the tan negative 1, cos negative 1, or sine negative 1, okay? And what you do is you press second function or shift on your calculator, and then, and then the trig function. So it's then the sine, cos, or tan button, depending on which one you're using. So find angle A. Sine of A is equal to 10 over 13. So uh, 10 over 13, 10 divided by 13 is 0 0.7692, four decimal places. So I want 10, uh, I, I don't know why I'm jumping to tan. I've got tan on the brain today. Sine negative 1 of 0 0.6292, and that will equal angle A. So I've got that on my calculator. I hit second function, sine, and I get 50.284, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just going to go 50.3 degrees. Now, if you want to check that, if you go sine of 50.3 degrees, you should get 0 0.7692 in your calculator. So this is a little check, right? Let's try this angle A. Uh, cos of 5 over 12. Well, 5 divided by 12 equals 0 0.416 repeating. So 66666. So uh, angle A equals cos of a, or cos negative 1 of 0 0.416 repeating. And when I put that in, so second function cos, 
I get 65.375, blah, blah, blah. So I can round that to four degrees. Now, if I want to check that, so I can check. If I go cos of 65.4 degrees, I get 0 0.4166, etc. Okay, so there's my little check. Okay, just to make sure I got it right. Let's do the last one. It's tan. Now I know tan of A is 0.5. So I'm just going to change my color just so I know I've got lines and stuff, but it gets kind of hard to see. So angle A will equal tan negative 1, 0 0.5. So put in 0.5, then hit second function tan, and I get 26.56. So I'm going to go 26.6 degrees. If I want to check that. Tan of 26.6 degrees equals 0.5. Okay. Um, and I've kept the decimals in so it rounds nicely. <laughs> okay. So if you have that ratio for that angle and you know what the trig ratio is, you can use that second function to find your angle, okay? So if you have a triangle that's labeled um, and you figure out the sides, you can figure out that angle. Now, however, if the triangle has two or of the three given angle measurements, you don't even have to use trig. You can use the interior sum. Um, the three angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So all you have to do to find the missing angle is subtract the two known angles from 180. So for here, um, <clears throat> I want to find angle B, right? So I'm looking for this angle here. Now this angle, it's a right angle, so it's 90 degrees. So I know that... Angles A plus angle C plus angle B has to add up to 180 degrees. So if I take 180 degrees and I minus 90 degrees and I minus 36 degrees, that's going to tell me the measure of angle B. So that would be 54 degrees. Now you can check that just to check 90 plus 36 plus 54 does indeed equal 180 degrees. So if you're never not sure, just do that check. Sometimes we do things in our head really fast and it would pay us to do that kind of checking, okay? Now, if the angle has two given side measurements and only a 90 degree angle, so, we know two of the sides and we know the angle, the 90 degree angle. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to find the reference angle. We're gonna identify that reference angle, okay? And then we're gonna label the sides from the perspective of that reference angle. So what I mean by that is you're gonna find your opposite adjacent and hypotenuse, okay? Uh, then we're going to choose the ratio, based on the sides we know, we're going to use our mnemonic SOKOTOA. So we're going to use SOKOTOA to determine which ratio we're going to use, okay? And then to find our angle, we're going to use the second function on your calculator to find the angle, okay? So what do I mean? Du, du, du. So we're going to find the unknown angle in each of these, and we're going to follow this. Um, and I like to say that you can circle. So circle your angle, label, choose, and solve. OK? So circle, label, choose, solve. Okay, and that's going to work for when we're finding sides too later. So first thing we're going to do, we are going to circle our reference angle. Okay, then we're going to label. So from this reference angle, this is our opposite and this is our adjacent. All right, 
So if I think, so ka toa, and this is our theta, right? Um, I have opposite and adjacent. So soka toa tells me that I am using toa. So I've circled, I've labeled, I've chosen. Now I'm going to solve. So solving, I'm going to say that um, <clears throat> tan of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is equal to 20 over 29. So uh, theta is equal to tan negative 1 of 20 over 29. Now, you can convert that to your decimal. 20 divided by 29, 0 0.6896, dot, 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 dot. And then hit second function, tan theta is equal to 34.6 degrees. Okay, pretty cool. All right, let's do the next one. Find the angle. So we're going to circle our angle, theta. Now we're going to label. So um, labeling this, uh, this is my hypotenuse, and this is my adjacent. Okay. So think about so ka toa. I have adjacent and hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse would be ka. Okay, so I'm going to use cos. So cos of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 7 over 8. So that means that theta is equal to cos negative 1 of 7 over 8. And again, you can figure out that ratio. By dividing, we're going to get the decimal. It's 0 0.875. Okay, and then theta, we're going to hit second function, cos, and I get 20. Well, I get 28.9555, so I'm going to round that up to 29 degrees. Okay. All right, so I circled my label, or circled my, tri my uh, reference angle. Uh, I labeled my triangle. Then I chose my function, and then I solved. Okay, so let's do the same here. So it wants me to find this angle. Well, woohoo! that means I want to look for this angle. Now, I don't have any side lengths. I do, however have two angles. So I can use my interior sums. Interior angle sum is 180 degrees. Okay, so 180 degrees minus 40 degrees minus 90 degrees equals bum, 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 50 degrees. So theta equals 50 degrees, okay? So for the last one, I didn't have to use a trig ratio. It helps to circle. Um, yes, you could label, but you don't know any of the sides, so it doesn't really matter, okay? So you're gonna be doing a couple of things. You're gonna be finding the angle measures from the ratio. Um, you're going to be uh, finding the measure of the indi indicated angle to the nearest degree, and um, then we're going to come back and see how you're doing on those. Okay, next thing we're going to do, dun dun dun, find.